Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at class methods, uh, which are going to be methods that exist on their own, separate from an actual instance of an object that you create. Wow, that sounded way more confusing than it really is. Let's check it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create myself a class here. I'm going to go ahead and keep it really simple and make a student class today. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw in the usual details here. I'll have the name of the student, I'll have the GPA, just yeah, why not? I will do a self.name equals name, we'll do self.gpa equals gpa, I'll go ahead and give myself some room. Let's go ahead and create ourselves a couple instances of these students here. I'll grab myself a Mary here, we'll do a student, and we'll call this one Mary, and of course we'll set the GPA to 4.0, and we'll go ahead and create a Harry, why not Harry and a Mary? <laughs> we'll do a Harry, and he's pretty good, but not quite as good as Mary there. Fantastic. Wouldn't it be really cool if we could keep track of how many times we've actually made ourselves one of those uh, students, uh, basically a student object, if we wanted a running total of that? Well, we can. So what I'm going to do is run up to my class, and outside of any of my handy-dandy methods or setters or accessors or any of those fun things, I'm actually going to come in here, and I'm simply going to go ahead and create num students. And I'm going to set it to zero, because uh, when we first create this class, uh, we will not have a number of students. Now, this is where things get interesting. How do I get at this value? Now, there's actually a couple different ways to get at the value. There's the naughty way of getting at the value, in which case I could come in here and do num. I could actually type in the name of the class, num students plus equals two, because we're adding two here. Uh, that's, that's real dangerous. You are allowed to do that, but it does not necessarily mean you can. Or wouldn't it be even handier if somehow when we created the student, we have a way to actually increment that? Now, this is where things get kind of interesting because the class itself is accessible. So one of the things I could do here is I could actually come down here and I could do something awful. I could type in student dot num students plus equals one. Now you're sitting there going, whoa, are you picking your hair up and carrying yourself into the sky? Uh, yeah, that's kind of what you're doing here. And this is kind of dangerous So when you do stuff like that. So actually, interestingly enough, if I were to come down here and print student dot num students, check this out you'll see it'll give me the number two. And now the reason it's giving me the number two here is because each time I ran this constructor, it grabbed the class and incremented it by one. Now you're sitting here going, ah, that, that didn't feel right. That, that felt kind of uh, dangerous actually. Um, is, there, is there a safer way to do this? What if I had to change this value back to zero? How would I do that? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at something else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create myself a class method. I'll go ahead and I'll blammo that out here. Now, a class method, like I said, is a method for the class, not the instance. So it's not associated with Harry and Mary. It's associated with the student, as in the framework of the class. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and type in class method, just like this. Now, when I do my define, I'll go ahead and I'll go make this one pretty good. I'll say increment counter, increment students. Get it nice and easy. Now, when I do the parentheses, watch what happens. You'll see instead of self, which would be the instance of the object, it's CLS, which refers to the class itself that I'm passing. So I'm going to come in here and I'll just say uh, num students uh, plus equals one because um, we're going to do that. Now you'll notice it's grumpy at me. It's saying, hey, you forgot something. Um, you're trying to take this variable called num students. You're trying to add one to it. I don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about? The class is variable num students. We're going to be adding one to. Ah, start to see where this starts to come in handy. Now, if you just ran this as is, uh, you get a number zero here uh, because we never actually triggered this. So to actually trigger this, uh, we come down into here where our constructor is and we can actually invoke it. Now, this is where things get a little weird. You're going to say, ah, oh, I can just do this, increment students. Aha, it's just like a regular function call. Uh, no, um, that doesn't actually work. Instead, what I would actually have to do here is I'd have to type in my class, which again is a student dot increment students. Now, if I run this, check this out. I am now calling a function when I create this, and I'm actually calling this particular method up top, which is now incrementing my number of students. You're like, oh, oh, that's that's different. That, that's I feel like that's a little messy. Um, what would happen if we had to reset it? Ah, that's when things get challenging. So of course, uh, sharp-eyed people would say, uh, hashtag a reset number of students created. Uh, a lot of really, it's like people would say, ah, oh, that's easy, just do student.num students equals zero. Ah, you just had to be that way, didn't you? So I'll go ahead and press enter, I'll go ahead and press play. And you'll see here, yeah, it'll reset it, no problem. But this is kind of dangerous. So we're basically 
really, really reaching into this thing's heart and saying, Kali Mod, ripping it out when we do stuff like this. It'd be much, much safer to put this into some kind of accessor method or mutator method. So let's do that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete this one real quickly. And let's go ahead and create a method for it. So I'm going to come down here and say at class method one more time. And I'm going to do uh, reset number students. And I'm going to pass class so because remember, I'm passing the student framework here. And all I'm going to do is to say class dot number of students equals zero. Ah, that's a little bit cleaner. So now when I come down here and I want to reset it, all I would do is student dot reset number of students. Now, if I run this code, you will see it looks like it didn't run at all because it works so well. You will see that it gives us a value of zero because I used this class method, which is independent of Harry and Mary here, and basically used that to reset my counter there, which is actually a pretty slick trick. Now, these class methods can get far more in depth, and you can build many, many, many different things that do all sorts of stuff to the class itself. Now, when you get really, really meta, we could pull values out of it and actually go ahead and use that for a way to give the student an ID. So, for example, if I wanted to come in here and do a self.studentID, I could actually do something clever like this. I could say student dot num students because that would be the new ID of that student because I've just incremented it by one, which makes it a little bit easier basically for that purpose. It gives you an idea of, again, how valuable it is. Now, these class methods, you've got to be careful with these because a lot of people will forget the decorator. Other people will forget the class. Uh, some people, of course, say, can you do something like this where you do class comma self? The answer is no. You can do one, but not the other. Um, once you start doing this kind of silliness, you're getting messy really, really fast, in which case what you're really dealing with is something that's going to be an instance variable. You're not dealing with something that's going to be a class variable. So you have to be very, very cautious with it. But as you can see, they are pretty handy. Um, they basically give you that little bit more functionality. Personally, I don't use these a lot unless, um, like I said, I'm trying to keep track of like how many dice I rolled or something like that. But it does have its value from time to time. Enjoy.